That was a bit of an epic intro, wasn't it? Hello, everyone. How are you? Oh, welcome for being welcome for being here. Thank you for being here and welcome. And I will sort out my language skills very soon. Hello, Sherry, just JP, Hibby Shay, Miss Clementine, um, Hop 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 Feta, is that right? Um, Matt Black, hello. Yes, went into chat. I will send you um an email. Um uh, Diet Dazzle, everyone else who I'm not going to mention because I, there's lots of you in here. And, of course, Luke from Ancient Historia. Welcome. How are you? Hey, hey yeah, I'm glad to be back, you know, <laughs> finishing off uh, what we were going to do the other day before you unprofessionally ruined it by being drunk and talking too much. I know. I'm sorry. I just can't help. Had to drag me out of the bar and I was incoherent and ranting about Jesus and all types of stuff. Communism. Every time. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Just can't trust me. Can't trust me. So, yeah. Oh, I've gone super blurry and I don't know why that's happened. Oh, I'm back. Oh, um, you're back? But, okay. yeah. So, I, cool. I promised Campbell that I would actually bring some real research to the table and yes. you know, salvaging the friendship with the, with the stream. Yes, yes, yes. He's he's helping me bring me back from the brink. So, and thank you to everyone who's who's not watching Archaics and Martin at the moment. We 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 put it off for half an hour, and they're still talking. So, um, go and tell everyone well, to come we, here. We've actually put it off for an hour into because originally it was going to be uh, an hour. It ago. was going to be seven. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But then, um, right. yes, we had a slight mix up the other day because of times, me living in the future, all that kind of stuff. Um, all right, first a bit of business before we get into this. Everyone has to go and sign up to this. There's a link below. Nonconformist series. It's free. Virtual summit, and I'm in it. Um, I'm on the last day, so go and sign up, and that would be awesome. Link in the description. And Luke has been getting spicy. That's the other picture I have to show. Tell us what, what's this, Luke? Oh right, yeah. I was uh, well, you know, the other night after after we'd been together, I was drunk and I wanted some. Chinese noodle soup to taste properly. So I ordered some spices, you know, uh, from the real sources, but I didn't quite understand how much a kilogram of spice was. So now <laughs> it looks like I've invaded India. Um, and yeah, a kilogram. That's, that's happening. A kilogram. A kilogram. He got a kilogram of chili powder, guys. So, um, yeah. A kilogram of chili definitely... powder, kilogram of paprika, uh, kilogram of garlic, <laughs> kilogram of onion. Um, five spice, MSG. MSG, nice. Mm. MSG Should is be good for a you. Kitchen, a soup kitchen. <laughs> soup kitchen, yeah. Mm. You need a trolley Ancient now. Trolley. You'll be there. <laughs> Ancient Tastoria, yeah, man. I mean, well, technically, yeah. it is all spices that we stole from the Mughal Empire. So these, this is, you know, Tartarian. There you go. That could be your next, your next, you know, line of research, man. Down, down the Five Spice Trail. Exactly. Revive the Tartarians via flavour. Yes, yes. Well, that's, that's a big question, food. What did they eat? 
Who were these Tartarians? Who did they eat? Oh, oh, okay. Them fine words. Come on. Well, I, I, we, you to take it from dark places. I meant cannibalism. Yeah, <laughs> you meant cannibalism. That you see a lot yeah, of that. Well, they love you. lives, you know. Whatever Tartarians do, Tartarians do. So, what about Tarzan? Was he a Tartarian? Probably. I mean, he was wearing Tarzan goggles, from Tarzan, wasn't he? Yeah, interesting. All right, so. Um, welcome again to everyone in chat. Thank you for being here. 92 of you already. Now, we will entertain and enlighten you tonight. What are you smoking there? Is that a cigar? Uh, we'll say oh, yes. Or would, you, or would you rather not comment? Yes. All right. So tell us about Gog. Um, or, I mean, it's Gog, Gog Magog, Gog. really, isn't it? It's not because a lot of, like, we get taught in a lot of, um, you know, um, um, places <laughs> um, that it's Gog and Magog, but it's it's actually Gog Magog. Well, it's debatable, really, because I think um, all our stories are, you know, they derive from something. So to sit there and say, oh, well, it's one thing, we, we don't know. Um, we didn't. Some suggest that it's Gog from Magog, and others suggest that they're two individual tribes um, that, you know, come together and, oh, yeah, you've brought it up. Well done. <laughs> Uh, I was staring at them like, wow, he's on the same screen I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is obviously the the Wikipedia explanation of Gog and Magog. They are known in Arabic as Yujaj and Majaj or Yujuj and Majuj, which uh, can come important later. We'll talk about that uh, as it comes up. But they appear in the Bible and the Quran as individuals, tribes or lands. So as you can see, it's not very uh, useful when you're trying to identify people. But this actually makes sense because the land would be named after the tribe or the tribe after the land, vice versa. And usually the individuals are involved in that as well. If you meet an individual from that tribe, you might carry that name. You know, you don't bother to say, what's your name? And most of the time they didn't, you know, really understand people. So they might just be like, those are the Gog Magogs, you know, or that's Gog or George even. Uh, so that kind of comes into it. The yeah. uh, There is a connection to Alexander the Great, which is down here. A legend was attached to Gog Magog by the time of the Roman period that the gates of Alexander were erected by Alexander the Great to repel the tribe. Romanized Jewish historian Josephus knew them as the nation descended from Magog the Japhetite, as in Genesis, and explained them to be Scythians, as they always end up being. In the hands of early Christian writers, they became apocalyptic hordes. Throughout the Middle Ages, they were variously identified as the Vikings, the Huns, the Khazars, the Mongols, the Turanians or other nomads, or even the 10 lost tribes of Israel. So we know Ooh. that Tartarians, which are basically all these, they're all Scythians of some extent. They identify as uh, lost tribes of Israel. Tartar itself means remnant. I think it's uh, in the old Scythian. Um, and there is a Hebrew, uh, like a Hebrew version, but I'm, I can't be quoted on the exact meaning of that one. You can also see here, according to one interpretation, Goth and Magothi are the kings of the unclean nations who Alexander drove through a mountain pass and prevented from crossing his new wall. So think about, even though it wasn't Goths. mentioned here, mm. yeah, the Goths, <clears throat> because who sacked Rome? The Goths. The Goths. Goths yeah, sacked Rome. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so basically uh, you're saying that these are all, all these different tribes or cultures or whatever names are basically all Scythians, which are what we're calling Tartarians. Uh, yeah, essentially. So, I mean, well, Tartary itself, um, it's hard to pinpoint a place. Like, you know, scholars will talk about this all the yeah. time in, uh, before Tartary became just a myth. But, you know, they'll talk about there being like five Tartaries, but there'll always be one that they call Tartaria proper. And that seems um, to be more Siberia, but northeast Siberia in particular. Yeah. So the areas north of like China. Those areas yep. are usually indicated as being proper Tartaria. Um, and then obviously it gets conflated because they controlled at one point most of Russia. Uh, they controlled, you know, all of China. They controlled yep. parts of, in, you know, all of India at one point. But it's all, it's hard to gauge exactly the dates for these things because it's all been, you know, wiped out. And uh, people didn't really write things down as much as they should have in the deserts. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things. Now, this is interesting. The, mm. This guy here, Dual Karnain, is Cyrus the Great, Cyrus the Great, which 
you know, he does kind of beg the question, is that connected to Osiris? But that's Dual Karnain, he of the two horns, and that's Alexander the Great, but in the Quran, and he basically does the same thing with Ujuj and Majuj. So, um, uh-huh. yeah, so Alexander the Great is essentially the the white version, even though he wasn't white, we know he's a talker man, um, you know, he's Turkish, essentially, Tartarian, um, or Scythian. <laughs> and yeah, this uh, Dual Karnain is the Quran's version of him. So seriously. Okay, great. But, and it says that he built the gates to hold back the Goths who were all, so, so it's like there was, like all, there was just a lot of infighting between all these tribes that used to be Tartarians. They all sort of split off and started fighting each other. Well, yeah, especially if Alexander the Great is this Cirrus and they were, uh, you know, Islamic or, I mean, it, just because it's in the Quran doesn't necessarily mean they were Islamic themselves, but it could be just the yeah, story yeah. itself has been, you know, recanted in the Quran and it's been lost elsewhere. You know, Alexander the Great has become more of a myth, um, whereas um, you look at, you know, do our Karnain, if it's in the Quran, they probably wouldn't say it's a myth. But because he was also like like one of these giants, wasn't he, with red hair, Alexander the Great? Well, this is the thing. Again, that. That's another thing it always comes back to, giants with red hair. Uh, I see people commenting all the time, you know, wasn't Attila the Hun, uh, you know, a giant with red hair? People saying it about Genghis Khan, wasn't he a giant with red hair? Yeah, um, yeah. If you look at the tombs of Ramesses, I think it's Ramesses the first or second, one of the two, they, they have ginger hair. Um, and that that's something that actually they found in a lot of the tombs in the pharaohs mm. was that they are ginger. And it, it, yeah. it's like, you know, at the moment you see everyone getting angry about Cleopatra going, you know, she wasn't black. It's like, to be <laughs> fair, how do we know? Like, who cares? Yeah. She could have been ginger for all we know. And it's like, she this probably was of like, you know, well, she definitely wasn't black. It's just like, guys, Genghis Khan <laughs> might have been ginger. This, this pharaoh was ginger for God's sake. Like, <laughs> It's, it's nuts. And in fact, you know, they found cocaine in the stomach of Ramesses the second. Oh, wow. So he yeah, was a, a completely topic, right? but that's interesting <laughs> because uh, cocaine obviously comes from South America. And, you know, we, uh, we didn't yes. discover America, did we, until 1492? So, no, of course, he didn't know cocaine in, in his stomach when he supposedly died. And I think the official thing is like 1600 BC or something. Or wow, maybe man. Later, but, um, yeah, it was, it was a drug trade in the old world. So anyway, yeah, we'll get we'll get into some. Uh, oh Jesus, that's that's pleasant, oh, isn't it? That's, uh, hmm. that's how they all turned red. That's that's it. Yeah, just the hair remains. <clears> but um, we'll look at some maps now, so you can kind of get a gauge of where they were showing. Uh, oh my gosh, think, fact, that's a bit you know, gruesome before we do i know isn't it um what we will look at actually before we move on to that is this so this is in london so this is interesting because scythians came to britain and they came to britain a lot like uh saxons they were scythians literally uh Saxons, scythians uh nova scotia nova scythia <laughs> scots like scythians you. The Picts, they were also Scythians. I'm not kidding. Like, when you actually... Like, this started off as a joke. There's someone who will be in the chat, uh, my friend, Lewin. His, um, like, we, we were um, we were talking about this, and I literally made a joke that, like, it just seems like everything comes back to Scythians. And mm. it since that, it actually has become like, oh, it's not... Even yeah, it's anymore. interesting, like, the and Scythian, like, scythe, right? Like, a scythe is like a sickle, oh, like, yeah, like, exactly. like, you know... And look, few, you, you can't quite see it, there. But you'll, also, you'll always notice Picts are depicted as having scythes, you know. So um, that kind of gives it away. If someone's got a scythe, they might be a Scythian. But um, so this guy, the, the story of Gog Magog is that Brutus, when he came from Troy, again, they apparently came with tribes of Israel, but leave that for another time. Uh, Brutus came from Troy after, after the destruction of Troy, and they came with his pal Corinius. And they stopped off in Cornwall and they discovered that the uh, the Giants were living there. Now, there is a lot of mm. debate whether these Giants were just the Assyrian Giants or whether they were actually Giants. You can see down here, the island of Albion was once inhabited by Giants, but their numbers had dwindled and few remained. Gog Magog was one of these last Giants and was slain by Corinius, a member of the invading Trojan colonizers headed by Brutus. 
Corinius was subsequently mm. granted a piece of land that was named Cornwall after him. So um, this was this notion that they've turned up and obviously they have found this last giant, Gog Magog. They've had a fight and he's apparently thrown him down. Uh, thrown him this down. Yeah, and he's killed him. So he, I think it, go on. Do you, do you see that as, as like, um, people's being amalgamated into a person, like Gog Magog? Do you think that's, like, race, you know, like, you know the last of remnants of, of tribes or whatever? And, well, I think it's and even Brutus. The, giant, the giants are Gog Magogs because um, there's numerous mm. references to Gog Magog or the tribes of Gog being giants. Mm. So whether or not they actually were or whether it's just a, a bastardization of certain terminology through history, or perhaps mm. when they say giants, you've got to remember as well, people in history did like to, you know, play things up a bit. You know, if you wrestled an eel, it would have been a sea monster. Um, so yes, when, yes. In, when someone's a giant, especially when we, we might have been a lot smaller, um, you know, if somebody was six foot four to, to a five foot six, five foot seven dude, mm. you might be like, whoa, that guy's a giant. And think today, like, imagine, I don't know if you know who Tyson Fury is, but if that guy came running at you in the past, you'd be like, whoa, that's a giant. Like any, any heavyweight no, boxer not. is going to go down okay. as a giant, aren't they? In, in his Well, history. yeah, like NBA, like basketball players and stuff like Shaq, man. Imagine, imagine Shaq coming at you. For real, and you would definitely, I mean, we might see him. He might just be on his way doing nothing, and we see him as a giant. We go kill him, and then we're like, oh, we just killed the last giant <laughs> because we don't find him. <laughs> he, was, he was just a tall dude. <laughs> like, yeah, he was just going you know, home. Um, but yeah, so right. that's where that notion comes from of Gog Magog. Again, it could be, like you say, the tribe that it's the name is from. And in Guildhall, they had for ages these wooden statues of Gog, Gog Magog and Corinius, but they got... um over the years, they got confused, and now uh, people call them Gog and Magog, even though they're yeah. two individual. Because when I was in Melbourne, yeah, we, the, the, in one of the um, arcades in Melbourne, they had, and I've seen them the same statues where it's Gog and Magog, and they put them almost like the pillars, one on each side, and they're sort of, I guess, Sith, they are a bit Scythian looking with their dress and that. It's interesting. Well, notice that Corinius actually has our eagle. That we see a lot. Ah, of. yep, yep. Mm, yeah. So that's that's how you know the difference. That that one's uh Chris. But the the original statues actually got destroyed in World War Two, and they they've made some new ones. I'm not of sure. Course they did. I don't think. Yeah, but for some reason they don't have pictures on here. I've shown them in my video. So if you want to go see them. Oh, you have got. Go okay, that. cool. Yes, and um, everyone, the link to Luke's channel is in the description. Make sure you go across. Check out his stuff, give him a like, a subscribe, share it all around, all that good stuff, because he's doing very good work. And, and, and much more coherent, you know, when he hasn't had six pints. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, anyway, continuing um, with this slander. So <laughs> <laughs> carrying on with, um, I think, what we were going to go to before that. So another one is there's these things called the Oaks of Albion or the Oaks of Avalon, which were a pair of oak trees, Gog and Magog, that were in Glastonbury. Um, but I think they're dead. Nice. Oh. In April 2017, although dead, Gog was badly damaged by fire from a candle. Oh, those what? notorious from a candle? deadly candles. <laughs> it's just I mean, like, the, oh like, like the floating candles. It's like you know, the cows, you know, man. It's like these cows that keep burning like down cities, you know. Like... A candle next to a dead tree, and someone just be like, you "Don't want to do that, mate." <laughs> but that, it'll go up. It'll go up. But oh yeah, so, oh, wow, that's actually you could you could tell they've probably done that on purpose, haven't you? It was um, magic fire, magic candles. But yeah, so as you can see, there's a few references, and there's also Gog Magog Hills in Cambridge. So uh, and you know nice. Magog Down. So there is a lot of uh, references in Britain. Gog Magog Excuse Hills, me. wow, did they used to be cliffs, I wonder? Any cliffs oh, nearby the hills? Uh, all, all, I, all I do know is that it's, uh, you know, it's all connected, this Troy, because you've got to remember, Trojans were Tartarians. Well, they were Aryans from Scythia. Um, like, <laughs> we we did it in so, my Tartarian, the news series. Where we so who do, you, who, do you, who do you think the the romans were were the romans from like a different lineage or whatever because everyone seems to be, be um, scythian i'm not like, really sure like at the moment i'm actually leaning 
towards the Romans kind of just being a conglomeration of dickheads. They didn't really <laughs> care about like it wasn't a it wasn't um it wasn't, so it wasn't like the Phoenicians it, it or... might have mattered to them, but I think it was about control because obviously it's about rulers. Um, mm. and we got talking about this, maybe I was a bit too incoherent, but I talked about Jesus being you know the Essene uh, Jew, which yeah. is you know very um reminiscent of almost like communism in the way that it shares everything but it's not you know controlled by a government it's literally like um we're in a bit of a well it actually sounds a bit freemasonry when you say it like this but if you just turned up in manchester i would house you give you my clothes give you my food you know just like that the same if i was you know to turn up in, in mm. your area or you know if you went to anywhere and you saw one of our group they yeah. would house you and that kind of makes sense because you know the stories of Jesus always confuse me. How like Jesus could just say to one of his followers, like, "Go find me a house in the next village." Like I can just imagine that dude walking around, like, "Hey, does anyone want to let Jesus stay the night?" And everyone just being like, "No, fuck off!" <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like walking around, like, oh. and Jesus turning up and being like, "You failed me again. Why does he <laughs> stay in their house?" But that now makes sense, doesn't it? You know, that these people, there's mm. always a house willing and they accepted him, ready and waiting. And they you know, put out a banquet and everything. everything. Mm, yeah, yeah. So if Christianity and, is based off, like, Jesus' teachings, then surely, like, that's what Christianity or original Christianity. And you've got yeah. to remember that original Christianity was hated by the Romans. They persecuted it for hundreds of years. I mean, it was only in 320 mm. AD when it was finally legalized. And that's because the emperor was actually a British Christian. And he was like, yo, this is all right. Legalized it. And they institutionalized load, it. Well, this is the thing that, yeah, the next load of emperors carried on um, kind of giving the people shit about it. But like you say, that was when they were institutionalizing it. They were changing mm. the Bible to make it not, you know, um, what Jesus was teaching and instead make it more about do what you want, but as long as you come and give money to the church and apologize to Jesus, you'll be fine. And <laughs> it, was, it, it was, that's the thing. So you've got to see the difference between one dude saying like, look, money's shit. The people that want us to use it are shit. It's just, you know, share stuff and be great to each other. That doesn't mm. work for the church who want to take your money off you. So they Doesn't want to convince power. you to come mm -hmm. to church every day and, you know, pass around and put the money in. And that's proven by Jesus' saying when he, he uh, uh, is, I can't remember the exact parable, but people are putting money in and a rich person dumps a load of money in and then a poor old yeah. woman comes and then in. Old and lady, yeah. Wants a penny in, you know, almost yeah. falls he over him, doing he it. He gave more than yeah. anyone else. Mm. Yeah. And Jesus, instead of be horrified, like you'd expect Jesus, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Give the old woman her <laughs> money back. <laughs> you know, we can't take from this old woman. He is like fucking clapping her, you know? You're being like, look at that, guys. That's what you want to be like. So even if you've got nothing, give to the church because that guy, he's going to approve. And that yeah, is just yeah. generating this, this system of like hand over your money to the church. Whoa. So obviously... They had to exterminate anyone that had the original Bibles, you know, the original, the original stories teachings. of Jesus. Mm. And that's yeah, how you get this kind of point, Protestant man. Catholic, um, you know, the um, the Crusades even, because we the original Crusade was actually in Britain, the Romans going into Britain, trying to kill all mm. the original Christians and give us the new Bibles and, you know, and say, now you follow the Roman Christianity, and they changed it to say that Rome brought Christianity to Britain. When it's the wrong, that's wrong. We there's proof that uh, Caradoc took Christianity to Rome in 40 AD. He got captured and sent to Rome, and he was a Christian. And uh, his son became the first bishop of Rome, and he, you know, and he was a descendant of this British Christian system. So it's quite nuts when you think of it like that. But we'll we'll get back and see. We'll put some maps up while we talk about this stuff yes. we'll see where gog the gog appears so where is right. this map from what year is thank it? you so spectacular latest member and i will be doing a live stream for all the members and supporters this weekend if i get that sorted uh so, maps yeah uh are you, are you still talking or do you want me to no, no, you can talk. I, I did have a good point to say about Jesus, but oh, I've forgotten what it was. Oh, please carry on. Say your point about but, Jesus. I'll just leave this up. Um, well, one point I was going to make, which is just weird, is like he did throw out the money changes, and now when you go in, they ask you to give them money. That's a bit sort of like how do you 
resolve that in your well, mind. Yeah it's, yeah, it's changed from uh, share your money with your friends to come give your money to Jesus. Yeah, like, come give it to us. And literally, like you say, they'll tell you, even if you, you're on the bones of your butt, still come and give money to the church. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's yeah, the other thing I was going to say. Back in the, um, oh, I think it was the 1400s or something, um, priests used to write, um, like, prayers and, and um, blessings and things for people for money. Yeah, and oh, like, yeah, they were making tons and tons of all this money, and they got and someone went through it and found out that they some of these priests and bishops had sold so many of these blessings that it was impossible for them to write them in their lifetime. So, so, they, so they weren't even like, they weren't even doing them. They were just taking money from people, man. Well, yeah, they and, probably had people in the back, didn't they? Like you know, younger junior people like writing. Uh, yeah, the scribes. It was literally an operation. It was they would a have business, had a man. Shop of holy yeah. men. <laughs> You know, all the immigrants. And it'll be going, come on, Jamal, write me another blessing. Quick, quick, quick. Mm. Get it out. But that's the thing, like you can't you can't rule people who share everything. Exactly. So this is what the whole system is about, about narcissism. Make it all selfish, make it grabby and possessive. And the thing is, is um Jesus was never saying like you can't own stuff. He, his point was like, if I've got two shirts and you've not got one, you you know, you must have a shirt. And they would also try and wear their clothes, you know, until they're falling to pieces. But, you know, that's something they were doing back then when it was much harder to make clothes and when a lot more people wouldn't have had them. So that's not to say today we would be still expected to wear your shirts until there's literally, you know, until they're falling to pieces and then you get handed a new one. Because that's exactly the type of propaganda that capitalism would love to throw back at you and be like, oh, are you sure you want to be living in rags like homeless people? It's not saying mm. that. It's saying that you know, we, we fulfill a basic need for everybody first. And then on top of that is excess, you know, mm. excess is fine, but even excess is shared evenly, you know? Exactly. So, and then it becomes abundance, right? Exactly. And that's the way it's got to be viewed. But the thing is, is the, the people in power saw this and they were like, oh, this isn't going to be good for us. Mm. Um, and, exactly, and how man. can we trick these people into, you know, into giving us all this stuff? Well, well they really like this Jesus bloke. So let's make mm. his message about, you know, about handing stuff. Because they, they even changed it, like, the bit where he's angry about people trading money and selling pigeons in his father's house. And, mm. he, you know, he, it's like he gets livid. He's like, you must not sell these pigeons in this temple. Do it outside. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, well, <laughs> Do it outside. <laughs> yeah. Literally. And the um, money you know, changes and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But you can see how the original story was probably Jesus going in like you fools. This is this is the devil's work, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should be sharing stuff. We shouldn't be, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Get these pigeons out of here, selling stuff to people, like you know, whatever. But instead, they twist it to like you know, you must do your selling yeah. outside of the temple. The temple is for giving money to God. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be good inside here, and then just you know, do all your stuff outside that you want, and then come back here, give us money, and we'll forgive you. And you'll be good with God. Well, they also they solidified the 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 point that you know um, it's not anymore about reincarnation, which is what Jesus supposedly taught. It wasn't about bettering yourself and you know uh, advancing your soul. Instead, it was like, look, God has given you a life to teach you a lesson. Therefore, just live it. Don't ask any questions. And if you're good, you'll get into heaven, right? Mm. So that way, people, if they're given a shit hand, they'll be like, oh, God wants me to learn this lesson. Do you know what I mean? They won't mm. try and better the, like their situation as much as they might. They might. They exactly. won't try and fight. They won't fight the system because they'd view mm. that as bad. They'd be like, "Oh, well, I can't. You know, I can't go and bring down the church. That'd be terrible." It's like, <laughs> well, it's that is. That's what Jesus Satan. tried to do. I mean, this is the thing, man. Exactly. Jesus so when was they say a the revolutionary. Church Satan, man. Like, I don't think it's sat satanic, like ritual worship in that way. They definitely do that kind of thing. But I think it's more about money. I won't be surprised if they just surround themselves in notes and just roll around in it. And laugh. <laughs> well, like, yeah, man. They they love their crown jewels and all this stuff and their jewelry. And and well, who knows if they know what that even is now. But they, there was definitely, I think, all stolen. But, yeah, I think it's all about power. And I think yeah. most of it's an illusion too. Most well, of you know all these. When we were yeah. we were chatting the other day, and it, it sparked something with me, and I got talking to uh, to my friend Yu Yan again, and we we spoke about this this situation with the money, and and I noticed like on the dollar bill, 
they've got obviously it's in my logo um the eye of horus you know the eye of providence mm. right eye of providence, so this is where yeah. i realized whole i realized that they've been taking the mick out of jesus right because horus is jesus like that's the egyptian version of jesus so the eye of jesus you the all-seeing all eye so they put jesus's eye on the money right and what have they stuck it on a pyramid and what but what does that pyramid mean it's just a pyramid scheme because they're at the top of wow. the pyramid and we are uh, we're working the pyramid scheme and the all seeing eye is stuck on it so it's the opposite of jesus's message and they're laughing at jesus mm. like haha you're on our money and that's the thing that if, if you don't believe me that we live in a pyramid scheme literally just search that on google and you'll see like a nobel prize winning economist that agrees with me that that's yeah, the way yeah. our economy is set up it's a pyramid scheme you yeah, and of course, pyramid schemes but and, you, and money you itself one. the word money means one eye um but i was just listening to jason before on archaics and martin and he was saying that the pyramid in old egypt represented the same as a ladder and it was um ex like exiting the matrix basically so, oh, I mean, really? that could be, a, a, yeah, so that could be another kind of hidden in plain sight kind of thing that they do, but they, but they, that and they've also, they mean, would mean the they've inverted, the, so they've inverted the pyramid, right, from a, from a way up to a, a top down kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I get what you mean, yeah. Well, because as well, the original pyramid supposedly had the, like, Mercury bar on top, didn't they, and that shape is the uh, inverted pyramid, like, on top of each other, like, 3D crossed together. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, so, the um, star tetrahedron, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, maybe that's something that we're missing from the pyramid. But I just thought that the pyramid scheme side of things, because, like, you know, we talk about Ponzi schemes and how, you know, they're, they're terrible. But literally, mm. there is a richest person in the world and there is groups that are richer than that. You know, there are conglomerates of, there are people that can get together and, and they are richer mm. than everyone else. And I like, and I just realized, like, oh my God. If this was a company, it'd be a pyramid scheme. But because it's the whole planet, it's fine. Mm. <laughs> and and it's something we don't talk about because they they say pyramid schemes that just you know they don't work. Like um, there was one economist mm. he was in a, one of Tony Blair's cabinets. Well, they, so, yeah, they, cool. they don't work. It's only for the for the people at the very top. Well, exactly, that, that, because that the benefit. Yeah. Yeah, because in a world where, you know, you can only have so many yachts being built, they want to be the ones riding on them, you know? Mm. And, and, th and that's the thing. And to have that, and as well, one of the biggest parts of this that people don't realize is the slavery aspect. Forget the jobs, <sighs> but think about how many, uh, you know, when you see like a Russian, old Russian billionaire, he's like 75, or even think of Rupert Murdoch, on their yachts, and their yachts are filled with supermodels, half-naked supermodels mm. that will be, you know, probably forced to do things they don't want to do and it's all because of money because if those people didn't need you know have any need for that or that temptation even well you know you know yeah things. i was thinking about this the other day i can't remember i was watching some movie but this is the thing like these old you know crusty billionaires and that they want all the stuff but like you say without money they couldn't get it, right? But you bring money into the equation, they get it all, and suddenly they yeah get yachts full of 20-year-old girls and they're like a 90-year-old half-dead dude sitting there and there are all these girls are dancing around them because of money. Well, yeah, and drugs as well because they, you know, they can <laughs> control the supply well, of the things money, yeah. people are addicted to. And then, you know what yeah. I mean? So if, if I've got yeah. all the thing you're addicted to, you, you're just mine, aren't you? You know? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, man, just, and, just and more leashes. Well, again, that's why they keep it illegal because they don't want you to have access to it <laughs> because then they'd have no mm. power over you. They'd have no power to criminalize you when they want to because even though they know mm. everyone does it, they want that ability to choose you and go, let's go open his house, find his drugs that we know everyone has <laughs> and get him arrested. And it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, you saw that with weed in America for so many years. Obviously, now they're finally turning it around. But even in England, you know, England's the world's biggest exporter of medicinal cannabis and we're not even oh, really? giving it to our own people it's illegal but what? england but england's cold yeah yeah we've got giant factories they do it indoors mate wow I yeah did not you know, know like warehouses they just use them yeah, yeah. wow yeah but the, the greatest bit as well they have to keep them secret because we, we will break <laughs> yeah, they just get <laughs> raided <laughs> man <laughs> <laughs> what are you no, doing tonight? We're, we're raiding, raiding the hemp farm. 
Yeah, man. Not for real, man. But yeah, they're in the south of England. We have giant factories that make a load of medicinal weed and then sell them to countries that have medicinal cannabis. And we're and then we actually have the gall to go in Parliament and tell our own citizens that there's no medicinal benefits and that we shouldn't legalize it. And you're like, I hate this timeline. <laughs> yeah, but, man. It's your power and control. Should we continue with Gog with Gog anyway? I think I think we should. I'm just going to put the map up and run to the toilet quickly. And so you talk. You have the stage, right, Mr. Man. Luke. Hi guys. Now he's gone. We can talk about what we really want to talk about. Nah, I'm joking. Um, where right. were we up to? <laughs> we were talking about this. Oh yeah. So we'll just look at some maps. We don't need him for maps. We'll just have a look at where Tenduk is. This is uh, Gog right here, which is Ung, as we'll have a look in a sec at Marco Polo's book, which talks about this. And Mongol here is Magog. So Ung and Gog, Mongol and Magog. So this here is Tartarus flu. We're going to remember that because that'll be important later. There's a lake here called Chorus Lake that we can't find today. It seems to have disappeared. This is Baju or the plains of Baju. Baju itself means land's end. So um, it's very debatable on where this really is because it does imply that it's on the coast. However, we'll see some maps which show you it's, it's not on the coast. But there's actually two locations as well, just to confuse things even more. One of the locations is by Lake Baikal and one of the locations is much further north. So we'll talk about that a bit more when we come to it. This down here, by the way, is Cathay, something we're going to see more. You'll notice it's north of the Chinese wall here because the internet likes to tell us that these two places are the same thing. And in fact, one of the airlines in uh, China today is called Cathay Airlines uh, because, again, that's something you'll, you'll find they like to do. If there's a city that's disappeared or something, I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a name of some a product or something that's really close so that whenever you search for that thing you just get absolutely swamped with a certain product and that will happen with Cathay if you start searching for Cathay you just get swamped with airlines um, but is he back yet I can hear noises and we can also see here by the way the Otto Otto Rakora Mons so that's quite interesting that Otto in China Makes you think about the Ottomans, doesn't it? But yeah, we'll move on to the next map. And as well, actually, before we do that, we'll click, we'll read this. So this is just something we'll come back to, but it's talking of uh, concerning the province of Tenduk and the descendants of Prester John. It's by Marco Polo. So we'll come down to about here, I think. Or what well, we start. Tenduk is a province which lies towards the east and contains numerous towns and villages, among which is the chief city, also called Tenduk. Um, so the guy's called Prester John, but his name is George, which could be George, as in Gog. Um, probably makes sense, wouldn't it? George Gog. The rule of the province is handed to the Christians. There are also plenty of idolaters and worshippers of Muhammad. And there is also here a class of people called Argons which is as much to say in French Gosmol, in other words, sprung from two different races. So it means that they are of the race of Tenduk and also of the Mohammedans. So when these guys started getting freaky, they created these Argons, supposedly. And they lived around this Argon River, we think. We can see down here, it says the country of Gog and Magog, they call it Ung and Mongol, which is what we just saw before on that map. So here it says Ung was the title of the people of the country and Mongol, a name sometimes applied to the Tartars. This as well. And when you have ridden seven days eastward through this province, you get near the provinces of Cathay. So the reason we want to look at that is because Gog and Magog, the country of Gog and Magog are in the same area as Tenduk. So we also know that these Argons around Tenduk, Gog and Magog, Unga Mongol. So we know that these are all in a similar area. And as well, it must be westward of Cathay. So looking at one of our maps, you can see how Cathay is here. And up here is where Gog and Magog is. So that is southeast, but it's 
pretty close. But Tenduk is much further north. And it's actually being placed in Cathay. So you can see how the confusion immediately starts to, to play off. But once again, showing the wall down here, Cathay. And here is our <laughs> Tenduk coming off this lake. We have a lake called Albus Lake down here. And is that all frozen today? Down. Like this is area. That it's pretty high up, isn't it? This area? I, I, uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I think this bit is around the Amur That's... River. If we jump yeah. on uh, Google Earth at some point, I'll show you. But you can see again, Ung or Gog, round mm. about Tenduk. And then on the other side of this little chain of mountains is uh, is Magog or Magog. Mongol. And you can see as well, oh, there's Mongol. a Tartar yeah, yeah, blue. Yeah. Tartar. These mountains here, the mountains of Alkia. Now they it's debatable whether these are really Alte, the Alte Mons, which are much further south in Mongolia. Lots of oh, people wow. say they, are. they look like are they pyramids? They look like those Nubian pyramids, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they're pyramids. Um on, on loads of maps they, they come up looking really like pyramids, and obviously they say they are the tombs of the kings of Tartary. The tombs, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's That's as well, they're, they're actually specifically burial mounds with mm. what seems like pyramids or obelisks on top on of the top. burial mounds. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So now, and this region is that's up in Siberia, right? What's we, well, Siberia? We think oh. it's, it's well, it's debatable again, so it's hard to tell. You, you, your north wall here. You've got Cathay coming here. So we reckon Japan, for example, is, you know, is off to the east. Siberia yeah. actually extends up here. So they, you know, they they for some reason think this is the edge of the world. But it's it, this is where it gets really weird because uh, we were talking about this. There is one map from China that they made. I can't remember exactly the year, but it wasn't it wasn't um, it wasn't very recent. And the Chinese, they knew exactly what was going on. Um, I'll have to find the map another time, but I think you, Yan, if you're still here, you'll probably know the one I mean. And the Chinese guys, they this emperor had it made, they knew exactly what the world looked like, and yet the maps that we were getting, they had no idea what Siberia looked like, no idea what uh, you know, the west coast of America looked like, and the Chinese they did. So it's you know, the Chinese <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Cathay is to... China, wasn't it? Well, yeah, that's what I was uh, talking about before. So today you'll get told that China is, um, Cathay is part of China, but it used to be a reference to the northeastern sections, which are basically Manchuria now. And that's exactly what I was saying. Um, yes. As you can see, Cathay is Cathay. Once again, Baju up here. Ungog, <laughs> Tenduk. Samungul, Magog. And uh, you missed us talking about... Um, about this so this is marco polo he talks about tenduk which is the place where gog and magog are it's got these people called the argons who are a mixture of the tenduk idolaters and of the worshippers of muhammad so those guys oh, idolaters wow oh and yeah. muhammad wow. yep and uh this is where Prester john's from and the guy at the time of marco polo's visit was called george which i think might just be <clears throat> dodge you know because he, he would have been yep. Prince Gog. That's Gods. what they call him. So, uh, yeah. and Preston John's an inherited title as well. So, um, yeah, you're right. Gorge, that's a good one. Gorge is George, hey? Yeah. Now, there is this, which this has appeared. This is really weird. So, I'm not kidding you. Before I made my video on this, if you searched, where is Tenduk? Uh, a lot of links had come up telling you it's in Hohot, a place in China called Hohot. I went to do that today to find you some of those links to show you. And the, the search results that I was guessing had completely changed. Right? I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding. I linked it into my Discord and was like, am I the only person that's getting this? And my mod was like, no, nah, I've just checked it as well. It's gone. They've removed like loads of the notes, but it's still here in this one. But look what they've done. They've actually, if you search now for where is Tenduk, it will actually pop up with Argon. And they've added in this to Argin people that are in Kazakhstan because they're trying to they're trying to send you in the wrong direction, right? They, and see, 
The name of the Argons probably <coughs> corresponds, probably, probably, <laughs> no evidence, Man, it yeah, probably yeah. corresponds to that of the Argons mentioned by Marco Polo in a country called Tenduk around modern day Hohot. Literally, I'll show you where Hohot is. Hohot is where the Wall of China is, right? So, okay, it, yeah. look, see here. This is where Hohot is. The Wall of China literally goes through Hohot. A section of the wall is in Hohot. We have seen already a couple of maps, but here's our wall. And up here is where we see it end up. So, mm. I'm, I'm, I just Why feel like. Not? The guy, you know, Marco Polo, if he's writing about it, surely he would have been like, the Chinese wall is here. I'm confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something along those lines. But, yeah, so this just shows, because I'm not kidding. This man, man. That they've, genuinely, they've genuinely seen my video and been like, change it. I've, I've, I've had the same thing, like, you know, over the last couple of years. Like when I first started, the stuff that you'd get when you did searches, there was there was tons of it, and it just gets less and less. And I've looked for certain pictures and articles, and they just they just don't exist oh, online God, anymore. I'm I'm basically doing QA testing, aren't I? For the uh, you're, you're helping the AI man. man. You're locking well, us yeah, in. What are you doing? Somebody's clearly watched my video and been like, "This guy's just basically proving it's not ho hot and that it's around Argon." Right? Let's edit a page because this yeah, is what man. I'm trying to do. The Many thing black is, are coming. If, if this is the Argon tribe. The reason is because they'll just be, um, you know, descendants of them, most likely, or maybe named after them, or maybe they left because obviously there was loads of war in those areas. So it's very possible that they are descendants of them. The problem mm -hmm. is, is it's trying to confuse you by saying the Argon people are in Kazakhstan, which again was part of Tartaria, but the Argon mm -hmm. people are in Kazakhstan and Tenduk was in Hohot. So if you come to this, you go, you go away from it like, oh, okay. Because it says, oh, around modern day Hohot. And if you don't know the truth, well, at least if you haven't seen some of the maps, it took us a while to, you know, come to these conclusions. So we'll go into it a bit more now about where these places are, but we'll have a look at some more maps. But again, it's, this is where the wall is. It's ridiculous, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Um, we'll look at this one. This one's a bit of a poor map, actually. And it won't let me won't let me zoom in. That's no. excellent. Oh, now it will. <laughs> Okay, right. So again, you can see down here. Um, interestingly, Pekin's in the wrong place. That should be there, down here. So <laughs> that's moved. But yeah, yeah move stuff around. Again, up here is the Mongol areas: Lake Khorus, Sumongol, Ung, and Gog over here on the right. And now this really looks like it's Manchuria, doesn't it? Because mm, you've got Korea down light, here. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can even see there that place is called Kambalu U Munchu. Munchu, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Kambalu U Munchu is what does Kambalu mean? It means the I court bet. of the Khan, court of the Sham, or city of the ah, Sham. So, of city Manchuria. of the Sham of Manchu, the Manchu Shams. See, mm. so the Manchu Tatars. Uh, Manchu, by the way, is the name that they actually changed from. Um, from their original name i'm gonna to have to get back to you on what it was but they changed their name to manchu one of the emperors decided no we're not being called that anymore and just changed it to manchu did he change it from but, stiletto <laughs> yep yeah, that's what he did stilettos to manchus <laughs> but yeah you can see here that cafe is uh, actually you know shown as being more northwest of uh of the wall so yeah, mm. these places move, but Ca cafe is usually shown as being this area here and this by the way Kambalu, this is another one. If you search for where is Kambalu, they'll tell you, oh, that's Khan Balik, which is Beijing or Peking, right? Khan Balik mm. is, yeah, city of the Khan. It basically means the same thing. Khan Balik, Shambalu, Shambalik. Um, it's, it really kind of does mean the, same, mean the same thing. But Peking means the same thing as well. Peking, city of the king. So oh, yeah. Okay. The reason, the, and when the Manchus took over in 1644, and they made Pekin one of their palaces because they like to have multiple palaces. They'd have, you know, summer palaces, winter palaces. Your kids would have palaces. They'd move around to different palaces as all kings did. Um, so they basically lie by saying that Kambalu was Kambalik, even though they know full well that there are many places that were called Kambalu. I'll be doing a video soon on the capitals of Tartaria. Um, I've, I think there was at least three or four different ones in this area through the years, maybe even five. Um, 
so we'll get off that map because that was a little making me feel sick moving around on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, again, so this bars you, this is going to be important for what we look at. Um, down here, Kambalu again. Look, and this region is actually, you know, Kambalu River right there. So how the hell is that over here? Mm. How, how do you make the confusion of a, you know, thing being on the wrong side? On, 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 mm. One sec, mate. Just let me find my uh, charger for me mouse. <laughs> oh, oh, for your mouse. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah the, he's turned off. I found it. It's here somewhere. So have you come across the Hyperboreans in your studies? Um, I've only seen Hyperborea on maps at the top. Do you know that there's like a people like the, the Greeks yeah. talked about the Hyperboreans? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I know I've obviously not delved too deep into it. I know that the Greeks referred mm. to them as the people, you know, beyond the north. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just this landmass is very you? north. It's very up where it's not far from, you know, where some of the maps show Hyperborea. And that's obviously one of the theories is these people coming, you know, it, we get all these stories of they came down from above and all this. I mean, maybe that's just from the north, right? From well, above. Well, yeah, this is actually interesting. You know, you, you'll like this one. Um, do me a favour, though, because I want to smoke the rest of this. Would you like to read this to the group? Um, <sighs> it's starting just, if you can see it all right, I think. Under the year? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, start for here. Uh, can you see from there, under the year? I can. Under the year... 1114, it is noted that the Chronicle of Novgorod, that old man who had gone to Ugria, oh, hang on, I'm not reading this very well. <laughs> in the year, under the year 1114, it is noted in the Chronicle of Nov, Novgorod, Novgorod. Novgorod, that old man who had gone to Ugria saw a cloud touch the earth. And then fur-bearing animals came out of it. What? And rushed away through that country in myriads. Another cloud came down and reindeer sprang out of it. These tales are like those told by Pacific Coast Indians. They are tribes on the Klamath River um, who tell of animals coming from the sky. I have several such myths which I took down to California. This account... Uh, uh, in Nestor's Chronicle is beyond doubt a Siberian myth or tale to some Russians who told it at home and it had been an eyewitness or who was reporting as so telling it. All right. So basically animals from the sky. This is, um, do you watch Jay Dreamers at all? Have you seen any of his work? Uh, no, no, I'm not. He, he talks about... Um, animals coming down from the sky during during resets and things so that that's that's fairly interesting yeah i, I thought you'd really like that that's why i included it uh, there's also a little mention here just uh, it's not too important but it's from a journey in southern siberia which presents a picture of the modern mongols around lake baikal so this is why baikal is important so um before we read this bit which talks about baju um, because I found that after my video about Baju, and it actually proves that what I was saying was correct. So the video that I did called The Moving Plains of Baju was talking about how I'd claimed that Baju was next to Baikal, but however, I'd found a load of other maps that pointed it to being in a different place. And well, then it turns out there are actually two. So um, that's great. <laughs> Vindicated. <laughs> but this is Ergon Ekon. Now, this is interesting because Ergon, you know, Argon. Argon, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and as well, by the way, there was a city Argon Khan, Argon okay. in which was one of the capitals of uh, Chinese Tartary, was called Argon. It's the ancient city of Argon. So, mm. um, we won't get into which that. Which is close, very close to Archon, I've got to say. Well, yeah, very close. But in the Turkic uh, mythology, the myth aims to explain the foundation of the first Turkic Karganate, which is there. So, you can see the size of this first Karganate in AD. Okay, so. A cargonet is like a kingdom. Yeah, so um, an emirate is the exact same thing. An emir. Uh, empire, emirate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So cargonet is a cargon. But a cargon is like a... Um, a, cur a kurgan is named after the same thing. It's burial mound. There's also a place called kokand, which means kurgan. 
Uh, it's one of the Co- uh, cocaine. Yeah, co- cocaine. cocaine. It's the same thing. So carganate yeah. essentially means that, and carnet comes from that. Carganate, carnet, carnet, yeah, carnet, yeah. from an emir, from emirate, and you've also got um, the Ukrainian. Oh, there was another one. Can't think what it's called. There's a heptits carganate or something. Heps targanet. Can't remember. But anyway, so this was the size of the thing in 600 AD. So as you say, you know, it's, it's pretty large. That's going to be causing some issues for anybody in these areas that want to be trading. Mm. Through here. You know, it's the Silk Road that they've got captured. Um, but what does this sound like? The, the legend tells about a great crisis of the ancient Turks. Following a military defeat, the Turks took refuge in the legendary Ergonekon Valley, where they were trapped for four centuries. What? They were flying... Yeah, they were finally released when a blacksmith created it. When a blacksmith created a passage by melting the mountain, allowing the wow. great Wolfina to lead them out. The the people led out of the valley, founded the Karganat, with the valley functioning as its capital. Now, what does that sound like with what? the uh, losing a battle and getting stuck in a valley where they were trapped? Um, like the the desert wanderings, Moses is it Moses? Yeah. Well, no, I was I was going to say it sounds a lot like uh, Alexander the Great, what he did to Gog Magog. He locked them in. The oh, okay. Place. He locked them up into a thing. For hundreds of years. And the story oh. of the Gog Magog was when they were finally free, they would ravage the lands. And now when these guys broke free, they, they built a giant car. Gun. Okay. So they were like, almost like they were locked up in Tartarus. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And in fact, you know, another interesting so, um my mod again posted a map that actually had Tartarus written on it in, um, I think it was around here in, in Russia. Wow. So, yeah. Where, I, I think it okay, it actually Kazan. said Tartarus. Oh, you know wow. is. Yeah, yeah, right. That was wow. written as Tartarus. Um, and as well, Siberia was looking like it controlled bits of Ukraine. I mean, that's interesting because it's, that that strip is kind of underneath where a lot of the you know we've been looking at right the original Tartarian or Scythian Empire. So that would be underneath it, right? The underworld, well, maybe. And as you can see, the Mongolian version. Uh, this comes down to the Khanate of Kiva, which even though that says that the Khanate of Kiva was only for a few years, you can see that really it was around a lot longer, and it was yeah, only. Yeah. But it was taken over by the Russians in the 1870s, 1860s, 70s. Um, I think it was late 60s. Uh, Bakara Kargana, uh, Karnat, sorry, was another one of them. And I went over this again in my Tartari in the news. We talked about all these because it, it was popping up how the Russians took over these areas, basically. But again, it shows that these guys, these Karnats, believed in the, you know, the 14th century in this Ergonekon myth. So they, they did believe in this, that they, they came from some valley and were, you know, released, which does yeah, sound right. a lot like what happened with Alexander and, the Great. And there were the carnets, like like yes. in, incarnate, incarnate. Ooh, <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, yeah. Incarnate, yeah. Wow, where are you? I'm just saying I incarnate. Yeah, wow. Interesting. So this, this bit here talks about the um, the two so um it's just talking about marco polo it says marco calls the vast region of eastern russia extending north from manchuria and mongolia to the arctic ocean and east to the sea of okhotsk and the pacific ocean the plains of baju at times however he uses baju to refer only to a limited area near lake baikal as when he tells us of the homeland of the early tartars and of their struggles in Prester john now this could be a lie this could be a red herring to make us think that it is closer to Baikal because they don't want us to know that all this stuff was actually happening up in Siberia. That's a yeah. possibility. Because it might raise us, uh, raise questions as to like, you know, well, was the uh, was the climate the same? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. It would throw out their whole story of evolution and ice ages and all this kind of stuff, wouldn't it? Well, if that was um, inhabited, it like prove, I, I don't know if it's that far, but it definitely proved that um, something happened because you look at the the freezing, the flash freezing that happened in Siberia. Mm. You find animals yeah. that still had their vegetation in their stomachs. Although yeah, yeah, yeah. Carbon dating, whether you want to trust that or not, was you know suggests these things are like six thousand, seven thousand years old. Um, because I think this a lot. But of how do you, how do you carbon date something that's frozen? 
Well, I, I'm not a scientist. I don't trust much. You can't because it. it's based on, on like the, the breakdown of, of the carbon molecules. And oh, um, true. yeah, yeah. So if it's frozen, like it's not breaking down, man. Like all this. And, and it's been proven that carbon dating isn't, you know, in certain instances, it's not very accurate at all. But, yeah. And I, I know that they yeah. do. They do like to mess with it. In Britain, they'd have a, a system where they'd find something and they'd go, Okay, that doesn't really match. It, when they were in Egypt, I'm sorry, I should have clarified. When they were in Egypt in the 1800s, they'd find stuff and they'd they'd date it, and it wouldn't match. And they'd just divide it by 60, and then times it by 100, and go, no, it matches. <laughs> <laughs> Maths, <laughs> man, they, equations. They, 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 had, they had this method where they would. They, uh, I think it was like 60 or 70. They divide it by, and then times it by 100, and it adds this extra 30 percent on. Because you know, if you look, a lot of Egypt's dates are out of sync with the rest of the world. Like Greece will say something happened. And Egypt will have the same thing, same thing happen, but it'll be hundreds of years apart. But mm. they, they don't want to correct it, and they know that it's an issue. Well, Every real it's the same with Egyptian with Go Beckley Tepe. They've dated that at what eleven and a half thousand years, but the problem is it's all stone. What they've dated is some some like ancient fires that they found around the place, like that. That's that's not necessarily dated. You know the date. You know. That they exactly. built it it's it's we just don't know well exactly and as well it states here that um again this could be because this is somebody you know giving a commentary on the work which is obviously the easiest time to to put in your opinions i mean i'm doing it right now i'm making a commentary but it you know this is the official narrative it does say to reach the plains of bangju one must travel 40 days northward from mount alte and that's saying that Mount Alte is the burial place of the cancer. So that's insisting that Alke is Alte. I know some people disagree and say Alte and Alke are different, and that's a red herring, and it's not the same place. But it, it, you know, it's I'm I'm on the fence. It could be could be one or the other. It might be a case of them renaming things to put us in different areas. But this mm. is a another interesting one. This is from a religious dictionary. So you know, if you need you need your religious texts defining you know what does godly mean tell me um and godly. this is gog and magog you can see it says yes. gog may signify the governor and magog when joined with it may denote the people magog was the second son of japheth oh, no. and gave, gave name to his seed you shouldn't do that you shouldn't name your seed don't get attached his posterity seems to have people tartary a large country on the north of asia and part of europe reaching in length from west to east five thousand miles most of which at present pertains to the Russian Empire. So this seems to be from 1819. So, you know, it's saying that most of Tartary is part of Russian Empire at that point. The ancient Tartars called themselves Mowgli or Magogli or Mongli or Mongogli, the children oh, of the Mongol. <laughs> the Tartar <laughs> Empire in the East is called the Mogul, uh, sorry, East Indies is called the Mogul Empire and the country Mogulstan or the country of the Mughals. A tribe of Eastern Tartars are still called Mongols or Mongols. Many names of places in ancient Tartary retain vestiges of Gog and Magog. The Arabian geographer calls North Tartary, now Siberia, the land of Juj or Majuj, and says it is separated by dreadful mountains from the rest of the world. I suppose he means the Vichaturian Hills, which for the most of the year are often covered with snow several fathoms deep. Oh. So, um, they do talk about it possibly being um, the one in Caucasus because there is a notion that that's the, the region. Because, again, Tartars were from there. Um, there was a notion that they went over the Caucasus Mountains and Alexander stopped them from coming back. So it's up to you whether you believe that. Again, it talks about the descendants of Magog under various names of Scythians, Goths, Huns, Tartars, Mughals, and Turks have made terrible work on the earth. So once again, it's Scythians. And mm. this is a very, very long explanation that if you want to see, go and watch it on my channel. I think that's the Plains of Baju episode that I do this because it is, it's just loads of reading about how the Scythians invade this and then some more Scythians come and invade this. Um, you will see that a lot of them continue in media. So it turns out that the Scythians run Hollywood. Um, oh, so, yeah. hell, man. Scythians. Yeah. So the Caucasus Mountains, um, Caucasus. they come... Yeah, that's a, is that the same as as what we call the Caucasus now, uh, which Caucasus is where they is say Caucasian. Where 
from. Yeah, Caucasian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. and this is where all these Scythians <laughs> came from beyond that, did they? The Scythians come from essentially that region, yeah, and that region from the Caucasus, and they're the, and they're the white. That's interesting, right? Mm. Definitely. Wow. The Caucasians. Wow, that's that's very interesting. But yeah, so uh, we'll see another map here. Did I just hear like an animal in your background? That's Sam the rooster. Oh my god, right. I thought that, that was an animal outside, and I was like, holy shit, is there a rooster outside my house? <laughs> <laughs> I was like wanting to run to the window, like, oh, Luke, you're on a stream, you can't do it. I was like, but the rooster. <laughs> oh my god, he's going off now. But yeah, man, he's a very vicious rooster. I go and let him out, try and feed him, and he attacks me, man. He's got he's got like small small man syndrome, I think. I want to meet the rooster. Well, don't forget because you're part of the Essene sect now that I can just come over and you have to close me. Oh, yes, me. yeah, yeah. Come over, man. I'll let you sleep in the chook coop. No worries at all. Get a little roost yeah. for you. You can, you can squat up there with the chooks at night. I think we need to crowdfund this. Get me a flight to Australia because it turns out yeah, it's man. really expensive. Who I know, know, right? They're, they are really expensive. Well, Martin just got to America somehow. I think that was crowdfunding. So maybe we need to crowdfund Luke. Exactly. Luke, the greatest maybe a sort of your event. But once again, <laughs> this this place, by the way, it's showing Barju up here, um, Ungtenduk, Cafe, and uh, our wall over here. And by the way, you know, we talked about um, Khan Balik. If you look up Kumbalich, it will also take you to Beijing and go, ah, oh, you mean Khan Balik in Beijing. And it's like, um, somehow I don't think Beijing was on the Obi River in Russia. Yeah, so, wow. Because it's the thing, they're, they're shams of different areas, right? So each sham had a, you know, a city of the sham or a court of the sham. And he usually oh. had multiple ones. They, they'd have a summer and a winter palace at most. Uh, or sorry, at least. Um, so you, you know, depending on how many, you won't see them on the maps. But each of these smaller Khan, uh, Khanets and Karganets would have had their own, you know, Karmbaliches or whatever they were called. Um, yeah. So that's that's why multiple ones can appear on the map because you know this is the this is the capital of this region. Um, right now, they don't seem to have one, but Peking would be the capital of their region, which you know around here, and mm. this would be the capital of their region. It's kind of that, what was going on there, and they're all right. shams. That, that's oh, exactly. There's well, a lot of spelling in this, even, isn't there, man? Sham scam. Language, like, though. Think about it. Like, yeah. Um, where in in media, if someone's really good, or not just media, but things like that, you call them a mogul, and a mogul is the name media of mogul. Media. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, the Tartars, the moguls. But and then mogul. media, Medea is the Greek goddess of illusion. Well, exactly. Oh, that's that's a good one. Now, this map is one of the ones that really confused me because it, if we look down here, China's off down here. And this one clearly shows the Lena River, which is Russian. We, we know where that is today. And this down here is Lake Baikal. So this would suggest that Baju is right up into, into Siberia. And obviously, mm. by extension, you'd be left with Tenduk around this area. And it even says that Chorus Lakers and Tartar Flu is coming off that, which mm. would indicate to us that this is actually the Aldan River in Russia. Um, if we go on Google Maps in a bit, we'll have a look at that. But um, so I'll leave this map up, in fact, just in case you want to come back to it. But you can see how we, we thought that Baju should be around here because that's what all the text told us, wasn't it? That it was around Baikal mm. that Tenduk was. And we also have the River Argon around here that we haven't gone too much into today because we've been doing other things. But again, you can you can go watch Mario. Mm. That. So they're, um, they're pushing everything south pretty much so that they don't have to explain how people lived in frozen tundras. Yeah, essentially, because look, down here is the Amur River. So actually, that means that one of these rivers here is the Argon River because it comes off the Amur. Mm. So this you know, is the Amur River. Look how much further north it is. And you can actually see it's here, Sira Horda, Hof van Koen, Kaiser van Tartarian. So that is the um, the court of the, you know, uh, of the Golden Horde. The court of the Golden Horde um, of the, you know, 
Khan, um, or this guy's called Kine apparently, but it's Kine Kaiser of the Tartarians, or Khan Kine, Khan yeah. Kine, Kine Khan, what do you want to call him? But yes, it's the court of the Golden Horn of Kine Kaiser of the Tartarians. So it does say Kaiser because it's a Dutch map. Um, so the Dutch word for emperor is Kaiser. So yeah. don't immediately jump and be like Russians, but at the same time, yeah, you know, they are Russians, so you never know. <laughs> Wow, well, well, man. So um, there you go. History is not what you've been told. Like, how far are we in there? Do you want to end it soon? Or? Um, we're an hour and 12. Let's do another 20 minutes. How's that? We'll go for an hour and a half. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, this, map oh. will go, this, this one shows us a, uh, a good view. Now, come down here. We can see. This is our wall, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So as we know, Hohot should be around here. We saw on our map before of where Hohot should be. So if you imagine Hohot's over here, you can Tartaria Oriental over here, Chinese Tartary. And right up here is where you're going to see Baju. And there's a river here called the Uda or Udi River. And that, we think, still it still exists. There is one called the Uda. Um, and it's where we think, right near Siberia, basically, on the East Coast. Uh, mm. We'll, like I say, get Google Earth up in, in a bit and have a look. But what's interesting is there is a Barbu Sinskoy, which appears as Barju Sinskoy on some maps. And this is either the one they're trying to confuse us with, or it might be legit, because, again, there is an Argon River around here. Not sure, but it could be that they were up here. Because, look, this is that Alden River. So look here. See here? That river there that says Tartar Flu, that seems to be there because this is the Lena. See? Okay, yeah. So that this is the Lena, and that's the, oh, went a bit far. That's the Lena, and it's got this river coming off it. But on this map, the earlier one, you can see there's a river coming off the Lena, it's got a lake and then some stuff. So they might have dammed it, you know, they might have cut off the, the water, or it could have been, you know, changed the climate. Yeah. Uh, can't be certain but what you can see here is it says that this area was left undecided in the treaty of niptu and the muscovites settled it so the tre treaty of niptu or nichinsk is the treaty between the russians and the tartarians or the chinese um basically the russians have been advancing on all these areas and taking overloads and the chinese or tartarians got sick of it went and took some areas back and they made an agreement that's the one, I don't know if you remember seeing it in the articles, uh, Tartarian articles, that talked about them setting this treaty in stone written in four languages. Yeah, in Latin. yeah, yeah. yeah La Latin, that, Russian, yeah. Chinese, and Tartarian. That's mm. what this is talking about, this treaty of Nipchu. The, Set in was, stone, man. Well, yeah, and uh, in Tartarian as well, to actually have that, you know, because, well, I mean, we know it's a language, but lots of people like to pretend that it wasn't, don't they? Um, mm. But... This is why it's interesting, because the fact that they're noting that it was left um, undecided in the, mm. in the treaty, that really gives us grounds for it being a real place. So if the plains of Baju are real, then why wouldn't Tenduk have been real? Why wouldn't have, you know, all the uh, Tartar and Mongol, Ung and Gog and Magog, why wouldn't they have been real? So mm. are we looking, as this would suggest, Mongol being around here, so that that would mean you know we, we're possibly looking here for for mongol yeah gog and magog around here very good question i will bring up um wow. and, that, and they all end up in in the uk <laughs> from siberia pretty much um so this is our treaty of nechinsk so we're all Russian, first man. treaty between the Sardom of Russia and the Qing Dynasty of China. So this one I was talking about. Um, it was eventually undone via the Treaty of Argun or Igun, but oh, Argun. Yeah, yeah. It was undone via that treaty. And then eventually the Convention of Peking two years later, which gave them even more land. We'll see a picture of that in a sec. Um, and the 1861, again, going back to my articles, if you remember when the Allied forces took Peking and the Emperor fled to Tartary and then he died there, that is when that happened. So he fled and we made a convention in, in, his, uh, in his absence for him. Nice. 
um, yeah, with one of his uh, descendants or whoever was there, you know, point a gun at them. And you can see the Treaty wow. of Kiakta fixed what is now the border of Mongolia west of the Argon, because that's one of the rivers. Um, this is a Argon the city. It's a bit, it's a bit different. There's also an Argon Skoy city on Argonsk. Um, the current border runs along the Argon, the Amor, the Azuri. So we'll see. This is the actual uh, treaty, but obviously not the one set in stone. They just give us the, you know, the not very good one. And uh, there we go. Let's get this is this is a good picture for it. So. Before the treaty, the Russians were in all these areas, basically. The treaty pushed the Russians back to this red line, the original treaty, the 1689 one that we talked about, pushed the Russians back to this red line. But what the treaty actually said was the Chinese Tatars wanted all the areas north of the uh, Amur River back, which is this one. It comes in here, like that, comes in here, and it goes all the way around here. They said, we want all the territories north of the Amur River back. And the Russians were like, okay, well, we want to keep everything to the west of um, Argon, the Argon River here. Yeah. And there's an Achinsk. So this is where the thing was actually signed. It was actually supposed to be done at another place, but there was a rebellion, so they moved it north. Um, but they wanted to have it set like this. So in this region here, is the undecided plains of Baju because all they said was we want the areas north of the yeah, area. right. so they didn't yeah, yeah. specify they didn't specify where they just said we want the the banks on the north so the russians basically moved in just like are they gonna be angry are they angry no you're all right <laughs> and that's what happened and then it stayed that way it for 160 170 years until finally the 1858 treaty gave them all this land back and then the two years later, they took all this bit. Wow. So that's when that became all Russian. Russian and, and not Cathay or Chinese Tartarian. Exactly. So the river I told you about, the Uda, so I think it's actually there, the Uda. It's either there or there. It's one of the two, um, one of these inlets. So if the Uda, I think it is there, either one. But because there's a city called Udskoy there now, or a little town anyway. And that would mean, going back to our map over here, um, or was it was it that map? No, it's this one. Yeah. Going back to this, we know that it's, you know, a bit north of this. And there is a Tuha River here. So um, maybe there is a, a reference to, to that with Tuga there. See there? Tuga? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we have a Tuha river so what are the chances that tuha and tuga are the same probably quite high. Yeah, pretty high yeah 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 so, <laughs> good. so that'll be the river there. So, so that there means baju will be around here so the, uh, maybe, this maybe is this bit, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe this bit. it's just it's sounding very much like all these stories you know the tall whites and stuff and the whites that come down from the north or come down from the sky <laughs> It looks like you know uh, this is it looks like that, doesn't it? Right, they're coming down from the north and then sort of moving across. Have you come? Have you come across the moors? Someone asked before. Have you um, have you come across the moors much in in your research? And um, not a lot, but um, one interesting thing that did come up. One sec. So the British um, monarchy used to be called. Uh, Saxa Gotha Coburg yeah. or whatever it was, Gotha Saxa Coburg, and they yeah. changed it to Windsor in World War One because they yeah. were like, you know, this is them. Germans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't <laughs> don't want to have people knowing. But I yeah. went on an investigation, went to Coburg. Look at this. Um oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. This and of course Saint, uh, Saint uh Myrig or Saint Morris, Saint Maurice. Maurice. Uh, he's a Moor. He's, uh... he's definitely a Moor. Yeah, he's a Moor. And Saxa, oh, that's Saxon, Goth, um, I don't know what, Kog, but I mean, that's all Tartarian as well, isn't it? Saxon, Well, Goth, supposedly, this is what's really, interesting, mm, is the reason that he's this the is, Moorish. Saint is is ridiculous. It's, it's because he's supposed to be a martyr. He, um, The story's so stupid. So basically, a Roman emperor, this guy was uh, from Thebes, he was 
born in Egypt. He was a Moor, but he was apparently a Christian. And his entire team, his entire unit were Christians, even though it was at a point in time when the Romans hadn't even legalized Christianity yet. They yeah. they hired this group. They they called them from France and were like, "We need you, boys. We need you to get your asses over from Egypt, sail over here, and uh, come fight these dudes in Gaul for us." So they do. They go over and they start killing people in Gaul. Apparently, they suddenly realize that they're they're executing Christians, that they're slaughtering Christians. And they say, we're not going to do it anymore. So the emperor's like, right, I'm going to kill you guys then. So he kills them all. And that that's it. The guy became a martyr for that. And what? Yeah, that's, that, that's, yeah that's, that's apparently what happened. Um, and I just feel like that just doesn't make any sense. Why, why would no. this town in the middle of Germany be like, you know, like 1,200 years past. <coughs> go, Remember that bloke? No. Well, you should do. Remember that bloke that died? Let's make him our face. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, does it? Like, no. there's got to be a more important reason for this uh, oh, for the Coburgs to have a moor. Have, have they stolen mm. this city from the Moors? Is that what this yeah, is? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I did a bit of research on a couple of years ago now, like, and put out some videos up about whitewashing. And, um, like, there's, there's all this artwork back from the 16, 1700s that, start off as as black people and then they get repainted and they turn into white people it's very interesting it is isn't it it is very crazy huh. I, I was just looking at that i know it's, it's it's not much of a seal is it it's like somebody couldn't even be bothered to make it up that's a very small image is what that is yeah it's just the infinity symbol the but, infinity um, symbol like the stones but, yeah, so what we'll go to now, I think, just to slowly wrap it up, is this map, Siberia and Chinese Tartary. This is quite a good one. Because, uh, oh, yeah, because I guess how I really found some links to these places was I was on, um, I can't even remember how I found this, actually. I was looking for Tenduk, and I stumbled across these people. And I thought, what are the chances that some people called Dutchers lived in a town called Ten Dutch. Um, oh, the Duchery. Oh, you see? And then we get the and, Dutch. And then, and and then I, the Dutch. And I noticed, I noticed the Gagouli. <laughs> There's Gagoulis everywhere, man. Stop yeah, looking at right, like well, Gagoulis. Huh. Well, there is Gagouli right there. But unfortunately, Gagouli doesn't, you know, you can't click it. It doesn't have anything to do. It doesn't have any info. The dowries do. You can click them. You can find about the dowers. Okay, you can't so find out about the Gagolis, and that's that. Oh, so yeah. I just, yeah, look at that. So I investigated that more. Even the Gagolis hidden connections to the Gagurio. And by the way, when I thought about that uh, city, Argonskoy, that's where it is. Um, but if we come to this, this map contains everything we wanted. So here is the Duchery. So these guys presumably come from Ten Dutch. Um, these guys are Gagouli. They presumably come from Gog. And as the Russians have invaded, they've probably moved south. They've probably evacuated south into ta Chinese Tartary and been like, fuck that, you know? Um, mm. And that's probably what's happened. These guys will have evacuated because you can see here, by the way, uh, that was that river, Tugur. That's probably Tahir River. This is Utskoy, mm -hmm. the Uda River. So there's two of the rivers that we were looking at. Look, Tahir River, Uda River. Plains of Baju up here with his Oghotha. And even though Oghotha doesn't come around to Okhotsk over here, it's it's quite evident that these areas here are probably the Plains of Baju. Tendok mm. is probably around here somewhere as well. And they've probably been forced south by Russian advances or weather changes or both. Or weather, uh, yeah, yeah, or both, yeah. yeah. They would have just said, yeah, you can have it. It's all snow, too snowy, yeah, too literally. cold. <laughs> We're done with it anyway. But um, and this place here, <laughs> Monguli, a little city called Monguli. So we've got a Mongol people, a Mongol city. We've got a Gaguli people, and we've got the Dushri people. And now, yeah. when, when it came to the, when it came to the Dutchers, um, I brought it up to to my boys, and they were like, "Yeah, but you need a bit more. You know, you need to connect it to Ten Dutch." Um, and that's when I started thinking, like, well. These guys and a lot of the other uh, Tartarians, they followed this uh, religion called Tengrinism. And it is actually related to these Tungusic people, Tenton, 
etc. But um, they were following this thing of tengrinism. So if I show you this, tengrinism is here it is tengrinism. It's following the sky god Tengri, and I thought, oh, so if these guys followed Tengrism and they were Dutchers, they would be ten Dutchers, wouldn't they? Um, maybe that'd be that connection there, because they were, and then that did actually make me wonder. Wait, were the ten tribes of Israel connected to this possibly? But oh, I needed to connect. Yeah, right. I needed to connect Tengrism to te, uh, to ten Dutch, and obviously that's um, you know that's quite difficult to do. But it turns out that there's a type of tent called a yurt. Which we'll have a look at. Yes, which is yeah, to awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, guess awesome. what, man? This is where, this is where it got awesome because in a yurt is a special type of. Uh, reset That's right. Yeah. Right yeah, and they, yeah, they would yeah. actually use it to pray through, you know, through the house. They pray up to the sky god because they're in the middle of the house, and you just pray through the middle, right? Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if it's on here, if it's on this page. Um, yeah, man, I've got one that's like a big, it's a big wooden circle basically that goes at the top, and it's got like a, like no, a, yeah. Well, you can kind of see it in that in that picture there. Well, look at this. And what's it called? A tunduk. A tunduk. This is called a tunduk, the yurt rooftop tunduk, right? Look at that symbol. Look at that right. symbol. I know, right? <laughs> Look at that symbol. Look yep. at that symbol. Right? And then when you click on this, you realize a symbol used by Tengrists representing the structure of the universe, God Tengri, the roof opening of a yurt. It is the right. roof opening of a yurt, which is called Tunduk. So why yep. would the city have been called Tunduk? Well, because your king, your sham, Prester John, he would have been like, I want the biggest yurt in this whole town and in the middle of the biggest yurt they would have you know probably made him a huge royal yurt right in the mm. middle would have been one of these gigantic tunducks where all the priests and stuff would gather in the middle and pray up to the god and people would have probably known that as tunduk because it was just so big that it was the biggest one and it would have just gained mm. that name right mm. so the city tunduk and the, the region tunduk will be named after this tent this very symbol, cool tengrism following the sky god tengri and you can see that it was the religion of the first turkic kaganate we saw yep. with the ergonekon you know those are those guys mm. ergonekon that believed in that myth the gog magog myth and all of them look the hungarians the bulgars the onghu huns turks mongols the western turk and kaganate mm -hmm. the eastern kaganate you can Bulgaria. just see so many symbols that have come out of that uh, Look at that. The Volga Bulgarians, the Kazarians, the Mongol empires. It's mm. unbelievable. It's the sky like, wheel. It's, it's, oh my God, it's everything, isn't it? Yep, literally, absolutely everything. And, you know, Tatarstan. The cross, the swastika, all, all in there. Bizarre, yeah. man. So, uh, it's you know, it's all connected to Yakuts as well. And there's a city, you know, Yakuts, which, again, if you look at where Yakuts is, um, oh, that's a bit rude. One sec. So it cuts. Um, I'll see if I can get the city. Is it your cut score or something? Now, there it is, your cuts. Um, you so you'll see your cuts is on. What have you got? The river, the Lena River. Remember the, no, the Lena yeah, River? Is. Is this one here. Yeah, yeah. Right, right where the old Tata flu and Mongol That's... are supposed to be. And the yurts, the cuts, they use the yurts and stuff. So the yurts and the yurts. Yeah, your cuts is right here. Look, and that is our river Aldan here. This one. Aldan River. So this area is possibly the old Tata flu. This this itself could be the old Tata flu as it was known, Tata River. And that means that the old city of Tartar could have been around here. The old city of Mongol could have been around here. And what's this is the plains of Baju. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. So they've probably moved south as the Russians have come in. Or like you say, maybe it's been some... And kind now of there's game. a lot more land out to the east, isn't there? 
Oh yeah, a lot more and as well. Like, where do that land come it, from, man? <laughs> these mountains that separate it and would have been ridiculously as fast. But as well, at the same time, they're not too oh, bad. Okay. But these mountains here in winter apparently can you know. All right, so it might have been a mountain range that they just never went past, kind of thing. Well, yeah, they, look, they're in circle. Yeah. Here. You know, they can only really go that way, and they have to come down here and mm. go around this way. So these guys. We're kind of safe from them on this side, so it could be that, could be that they were here. Um, but it's absolutely incredible, isn't it? It is, man. You're doing good research there, tying all this together. And um, and geez, I'm going to start looking for uh, the borings again. I think you know you should read the book, the the Oralinda book. You might find that interesting. Yeah, my friends just posted that into the Discord chat. It's the, the only problem is I've got so many books to read. It's yeah, I know, right? That's right. You should do this, Luke. Go and read this. You should. You should. <laughs> no, literally, I've got so many that I want to read, and, uh, you know, I can't even... I know. This is this is the quandary, right? I mean, you know, Elon Musk, Brain Jack, we could neo all this, all these books, right? In an hour, we could have the whole library of everything. Straight but then we, have, you know, you have to lose your soul at the same point. So, this one uh, again, by the way, look this uh, this map shows the mighty Tartar prince Magog. His subjects ah. uh, eat raw meat. In his, in this realm, did Alexander the Great see trees reaching into the clouds? Now, an interesting one, by the way. I don't know if we oh. talked about it, but um, really, I heard oh, that apparently in Alexander the Great's time. Uh, the Pillars of Hercules, which is the opening to the Mediterranean, was actually sealed, and he decided to carve that open to create a canal, which flooded in and caused the Mediterranean to rise, which is apparently why some Greek cities are underwater. Really? I, no, I hadn't heard that. Well, I mean, I think that could be um, maybe them trying to reason for why the water levels rose in the Mediterranean. Maybe water levels were lower and the pillars of hercules were easily traversable i don't know but uh, mm. oh so, yeah, definitely water, the water levels have definitely changed that's it's interesting right, asia taurus there, taurus is in there too and look as well ulu bag the greatest prince of all tartary ulu bag I, and i forgot to ask have, is is there a connection between the great song gingang guli guli and all of these ghoulies. <laughs> I don't actually know. But are you seeing this? The dwarves, but five hand high. They wage ah. Yeah, that's another oh. book I need to read is the Colburn Bible. Apparently it goes into all the dwarves and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I need to And it's from well it's from the, it's from the UK, I think, isn't it? Colburn? Yeah, yeah. Well, Colburn sure. Colburn is named after it's spelt differently, but Colburn spelt uh like coal uh c-o-e-l-b-r-e-n is the like the ancient language of the british so oh, Bible is k-o-l-b-r-i-n but it's all to do i think yeah. with bardic stuff isn't it it's all kind of the same Comes yeah the yeah same yeah but, it's all yeah i mean it sounds very much like um tolkien as well doesn't it <laughs> this here by the way this is it to do with the uh, arabic stuff and yeah tolkien was really influenced especially by wales he loved welsh stuff and the the welsh language was what i think he based like um elvish on and stuff but yeah 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 um, definitely. this al idrisi places gog and magog in northern china behind a great wall within a tower and a door with a tower and a door sorry at the wall is an inscription translated as belongs to the Kofaya mountain range, which encloses Gog and Magog, a reference to uh, Dulkanain, which is the Arabic name for Alexander. By the gate is no doubt as to Idrissi's source. Gog and Magog appeared on Arabian maps as Yajaj Wa Majaj from the 10th century. They appear on Al Idrissi's map of 1154 under the same names. So it does beg the question, by the way, because obviously Gog and Magog is supposed to be part of the Bible. And um, why would a thousand years later people suddenly just be like, we should name this after someone? Else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Do you think it means and, then that any source that was naming Gog and Magog must have come after Gog and Magog appeared on maps? Or do you think it was vice versa? You know? So, I, for example, any sources that quote Gog and Magog and say they're Old Testament, does that mean that they're actually modern? Because. Well, then we, things yeah. that must have happened in the. Then we have the whole question of. When was the Old Testament written, right? 
<laughs> exactly. Because I mean, people people say that the New Testament is the old one and the Old Testament is the new one, you know. Uh, exactly. That's, and what you were talking about, you know, at the start of this with Jesus and all, and all the, the things that are being changed there, it kind of makes sense that the Old Testament would be the, the later one because that's where they've sort of put in, you know, the, the suddenly you've got to judge and you've got to do stuff for God and you've got to sacrifice and all this kind of stuff, isn't it? It sort of puts that power fair, play into it. That makes sense because, you know, we see it as, oh, God's become, you know, he's chilled out in his old age, whereas if it's the other way around, <laughs> he's pissed off. You know? Yeah, man, he's, he's said into a grumpy old man. man. <laughs> and now he's livid and he hates us. <laughs> <laughs> completely different God's, God God's a grumpy old man. Yeah, man. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So I think I think that is everything. Um, All right. I'm just checking through to see if there's any more things that we have up. Um, no, Maturia. No, we did that. We did that. We did that. And yeah, we did that. I think we did everything. So nice. that is. There you go. Um, that's the end Thank of you, the Lukey. Journey. Yeah, and thanks well, for everyone in chat. Yeah, yeah, 235 watching. So. Please give us a thumbs up and don't forget a uh, link to Luke's channel is in the description. And also don't forget to go down and in the description too, you'll find a link for this. The Nonconformist series, Unleash Life-Changing Inner Vitality. Um, virtual Summit free starts tomorrow and I'm in it. I'm on, on the 21st. So get your free tickets below, links below and check out Luke's channel. And thanks for everyone being for being here. Everyone in the chat, Hippie Shake, Diet Dazzle, Gog Gog. Of course, Gog 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 was here. Sherry Eyes. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela, for your support. Very much appreciated. Um to join our Midge Church. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you. Love you all. Can't read all your names or I'll be here all day. I did see Jay Dreamers before too. So, hey, go on, Jay. Thanks for being here. And everyone else, um, yes, I hope you enjoyed that one. And, yeah, go and check out Luke's other videos if you want more on this. And, again, thank you, Lukey, for being here. And, and of course, thank you for being sober. Relatively. Relatively. <laughs> Relatively. He's been, he's been like, I think they never yeah. claim to be sober. Been having like sneaky sips in the background, man. I want to be sneaky about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. He's just sculling now. Oh, geez. All right. All right. So he's a, he's a scallywag. We need to bring back words like scallywag. All right, guys. Thanks for spending some time with us. Love you all. And we'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now. Yes. It's time to kick it old school.